Lisa Lissi from Get Your Rock Out, and I'm here with Rich from Fozzy. How are you doing today? Amazing. The sun came out just as I sat down, <laughs> so I think it's our chemistry together. I think you're it's right. just, we've, uh, we, 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 I think we deserve this. <laughs> I think that you're, you're definitely onto a winner there. You're looking way cooler than I am, though, with the sunglasses <laughs> and hair is looking amazing. I've got a weird ski cap on, and yeah. Uh, yeah. You're, you're <laughs> you're too kind, you really are. But I'm liking the hair that you've got going on. It's Thank good, it's good. You're looking you're looking very well. Thank you. Everyone else has got fancy hairdos and, you know, <laughs> spiky this and that and I'm just going old school. I'm never gonna cut my hair again. Good, oh. Don't do it. Just no, I'm not, it's just not gonna happen. Yeah. I just the thing is all my favorite bands growing up had long hair and it's and like who I am as a musician today is based on the influences I grew up on and all of my favorite guys had long hair. If you actually took that out of context, all of my favorite guys had long hair, and you just looped that on YouTube over and over again, that would be amazing. You know I might I mean? do that just for yeah. fun. All my favorite guys had long hair, and just loop it over and over again. And then, and then as I'm doing, you could take the audio and loop it and have me do some crazy little <laughs> Weird, yeah, yeah. I think it'd be amazing. Are you trying to secretly admit to something? Is this what's going on here? Like you're well, trying, to, trying to do it in a subtle manner? Well, the thing about it is, is that if, if we're just, if you want like a different kind of interview today, I'll, I'll give it to you. <laughs> like most, like all the guys in my band were all married. So what ends up happening is when you're out on tour, it's not cheating if it's if you're with a guy. You see what I mean? And he's in your band. So. We, we're very affectionate. There's no kissing and touching. There's a mild flirting. It's the mild, because the game, the game is to make someone uncomfortable. So you see what I'm saying? So if we're on tour for 10 weeks, it's the, you're at dinner and everyone's kind of sitting there and you just kind of, and you do the little look and it makes them feel really weird. And then there's the occasional after dinner kind of, you know, like hand, oh, hey. But the game actually escalates when they don't react. Okay, or they do it back. Okay, so if I'm nice. like, I'm like, how's your dinner? And they're like, do the same back to you. Then it's like, oh yes, you're getting too comfortable. Yes, that's what I'm saying. There's nothing wrong with that. Two but men love brothers. <laughs> that depends what the furthest it's got before one of you's been like, ah oh, no. Yeah, that's why you can't. <laughs> can, I, can you can take things like that? That's why there's no. You far. can't do that. That game can't happen while you're drinking. <laughs> <laughs> You see what I'm saying? It's a sober game, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Wake Very up the sober. next morning with a lot of regrets. That's a, yes, yes. Or he made just new discoveries. Yeah, it could yeah, be the you, beginning of like a just, whole new exactly right. Fuzzy This band. is a whole new world now. Yeah. In the yeah. 80s, people used to use like gay slangs as like common vernacular, but you can't say it anymore. We have to embrace the new. It's a new culture. That's right. No judgments. New. It's all new. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean that's gonna that's gonna I think make make a lot of people very happy to think of think of you guys embracing a new culture. Well, you know, of course. You're gonna, gonna appeal to a whole new fan base. Well, metal always gets like this weird, and I don't even know why, but it gets this weird uh, reputation of being racist or homophobic. Yeah, it's like yeah, why? And they say, well, there's not a lot of black people at the shows. It's like black people are welcome. It's like you know, like we don't have a sign. It's like, but but it's it's about culture, and that's the one thing that people don't realize is that because there's not a lot of gay heavy metal bands, it doesn't mean that that, that culture is not welcome. It's just that we gravitate towards things that we uh, are culturally drawn to, and and black culture in general is drawn to. Whole, uh, music that came up in black culture. Yes. Yeah. You know, rap music, R&B, blues, jazz, and there are places of where those cultures can meet, and they often do. But even Living Color and bands like Fishbone, they don't have large black audiences. They play rock music, so they have a mainly white audience. So it has nothing to do with color. It has to do with culture. It's the same thing as like heavy aggressive music is only really popular in like the really bondage gay uh, culture. <laughs> <laughs> See what I'm saying? Because we're not, not, we're not sensitive, yeah. you know what I mean? Well, there was a huge outcry lately about a guitar maker. Um, 
think it was a guy called Vic, Vic's Guitars, and I mean, he was well known, you know, providing guitars for a lot in the industry. And then he made some some awful comments saying that he didn't like headless guitars and he didn't like gay people because like some some guy had come out as gay who used a headless guitar and he was like, this is just one more reason to hate headless guitars. And everybody was like, what? And he was like, it's not welcome in our community. And everyone was like, what? It was it was shocking. Like, I mean, this guy really thought that like but homophobia was rife, and everybody was. But I mean, the outcry from that, everybody just stopped using him. All these endorsements, everybody was like, "Have your shit back. We don't want it." It was, but, and that was nice. But the th <laughs> you know, the crazy thing is, is that that's the way it should work. The thing is, yeah. is that when yeah. people when people say stupid things, we shouldn't get the government to do something about it. We should just no, shame just them. Yeah. We just shame them yeah. because because that. What shame does is it helps to modify bad behavior. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's really what that's the that's what we should do as a society. I hate it when when a government says, "Oh, you can't hate uh, Muslims or you can't hate. like." I want if you hate Muslims, I want to know it so that I don't have to be friends with you. <laughs> yes, you know what I mean? Like I want you to be completely. out in the open yeah. about it I, because what happens is when you make laws, it makes these people go into the yeah. underground and it makes it makes it. I just want it's everyone. More of a community. And yeah. that is not what you want. Yeah. You, like, I want every. I want to know where everybody yeah. stands. Just yeah. go ahead and say it. And it doesn't mean that I, I, I hate you or don't like you. We just don't have to hang out. Yeah. You know, we just because again, it's like I think in this society we've gotten away from shaming. A shaming was a cool thing. You know what I mean? Um, because you didn't. There was not as much bullying. It was more just shaming. You just you know, pointed and laughed. Like I got pointed and laughed at because when I was in school I had like the Howard Jones like spiky weird oh yeah ridiculously spiky hair oh cut over my ears and long in the back oh, that's brilliant. oh yeah it was like the mid 80s like amazing mullet of metal yeah somewhere between missing persons punk rock and metal it was awful and i, I deserved to be made fun of and I used to wear girls' jeans and dance shoes, the Capizios. <laughs> but I bought those because Ozzy wore them. Okay? So, nice. but I was shamed. And, and it was good because, like, all people who want to be creative, they shouldn't be beat up. They should just be pointed at and laughed at. <laughs> <laughs> and it will make you a better artist because you'll remember. It's like, oh, no. Like, people, like, athletes, football players from my high school that used to laugh at me and pick on me for, like, being a totally nerdy, weird guitar player. They now like try to like email me and stuff online. <laughs> We're so sorry. We we had no idea that, yeah, and I never respond. Good. Yeah, because like I don't want them to feel. I don't want to make them feel bad or good. Yeah. It's like yeah. we could have been friends. You decided I looked suspiciously not masculine, and you've decided that we can't be friends. So now that you work at a gas station and I play it in a rock and roll band, and you now think that's cool, we still can't be friends, right? Now I get to choose. Yes. But now I think I think you're very right, and like society as a whole, it's just like oh, accept everybody, you know, be. Be, be nice to, to everybody you meet. Make sure that everybody feels welcome. But actually, there are some people that you don't want to accept. No. Like I don't want to accept racists. Just, I don't want anything yeah. to do with racist people. And I want to, I want to be able to have the freedom to say that no, I don't want anything to do with right. racists without that then being something that you're not supposed to say because that's ridiculous. Yeah. And I don't even want to be mean to them. I just want to ignore want them. To that's it. Them. Yeah. So what? I actually think it's again, it's human nature to embrace some hate of some sort. I don't know why we're programmed that way. I, I think it has more to do with tribalism that just innately we, we have we, we have always formed tribes and communities where we seek likeness and people that look like us and like the same things and stuff. The problem is is when you come out and say that that tribe is bad. you know but if you decide to, I'm cool with it. We just like I said, we won't go to dinner tonight, you know. We should probably talk about music as well. Why? Some point, this is so much fun. <laughs> it's so much fun, actually. No. This is the first like in-depth chat I've had all day. It's yeah, been wonderful. Because you're like, you're like, okay, so you have a new album coming out, and uh, tell people what they can expect from the new album. <laughs> and then they'll give some stock answer about what's well, the best album that we've ever written. By the way, our new album, Do You Want to Start a War, is the best album we've ever written. July 23rd, in stores everywhere. <laughs> But that's, uh, I'm sure that's all you do. And it's like, so tell us who produced it. And of course, I would say to you, I did, because we don't need to hire an outside producer because I'm just that good. And, <laughs> and then you would go, wow, that seems arrogant. I would say, no, it's confidence built into me by being pointed at by people in school for having hair like Howard Jones, you <laughs> bastards. 
damn you. Actually, yeah. yeah so, sorry. Here's your microphone. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. No, I think you were doing a really good yeah. job of being me and you at that. Yeah. I'm, I'm quite much better that. than me. Yeah. <laughs> much better. Much better. Sorry. No, I don't. I don't think I'd agree with that. I think that you pulled off the accent perfectly. Thank you. Thank you. You sounded female and British for a minute there. Wow, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Against, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, embracing my inner, my inner uh, Lilith. Yes. I think maybe you've been playing a bit too much like gay chicken. Yeah. That's maybe what's going on here. Is that what it is? It's That's gay chicken. <laughs> yeah, of course it's gay chicken. Oh my god, I never knew that. Yeah, I like... thought I just was loving my bandmates. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you're, if you're seeing how far you can get to like trying it on with them, I think that's technically classed as gay chicken. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. I'm going to have to rethink this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. There I am, just like ruining illusions no, while you're no, shattering you things. You can prove this. You yeah? can prove. Now I can rethink it and rebrand it, package it and sell it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get people to lay bets on it. Yeah, That'd be great. It. Music business is tough, you know. You have to... We, we make music and write music from pure motives. So the idea of... of um, ever like making a record to make money or to have more fans is ugly to me you know so so but we need other ways to make money so like if we could <laughs> like we could have like gay chicken the, the home board game this could be huge thank you you're helping me like work on this <laughs> because brilliant. like truly like brilliant. you think about it like my my heroes i love guys like devin townsend yeah what am i no, Absolute life. Yes, and and because yeah. he's fearless musically, yeah. and he's been re he's like really. Um, I, I did a record with Devin in 1996 with my old band Stuck Mojo, and he really taught me just not from saying it, but from being around him that um, being fearless is the is yeah. the greatest thing that you could do, because even though you, uh, although it may make things tougher for you that you would not embrace. The, the mainstream culture of, of what's going on musically, you'll gain legions of fans because they respect you for being you. Yeah, completely. And it is, it's that they respect you for being honest and, and for actually being true to yourselves. And so few musicians do that nowadays. They're all like, oh, we need to fit into this genre, and so we need to bring out that, and so we need to do this, and we need to make sure that we don't stray too far so people don't, you know, hate us for it. And it's just like, no. And then it's, you look at what Devin's done, and it's exceptional. Um, it is. It is. And 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 I, I had a quick lesson of that in in nineteen well in nineteen eighty nine. Wow. God, this will date date me. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's the year I was born. Uh, yes, it was a good <laughs> year. Um, I formed the band Stuck Mojo, and we did rap rock. And rap rock didn't even start until like ninety two or ninety three. Wow. So we were doing something, and it was really hard because no one wanted to book. Yeah. We had two black guys and two white guys playing rap rock and wow. it was hard to get booked because we were something that was completely unique and different and it was a lesson in wow if we just conformed and did something that was a little bit more like what everybody else was doing it would make it easier but in the long run it paid off because we were one of the first bands who was doing a different genre and it's the same thing with Fozzie. Yeah. Our new record is it is the perfect marriage of what I love about aggressive heavy riffing. My, my favorite bands of that, I love Sepultura and Pantera and, and Killswitch was just on. I love these aggressive bands that, that, that riff like that. But I also am a huge fan of melodic music. My favorite band, I love Journey, I love Rush, I love Styx, I love Foreigner, I love Queen, I love ACDC. And so there's the side of me that wants to be this melodic rock band. <laughs> And there's so few bands that meet in the middle. Yeah. It's either like really melodic and rock, or it's really heavy and barky vocals. And I feel like what makes Fozzie unique and special is that we do it naturally in the middle. We can, we can find the blend between melodic rock music and heavy riffing on our new album. <laughs> do you want to start a war? The greatest thing ever. The greatest thing ever.